Good day, YouTube. It is 11th of April, 2023. We are back working on this uh, John Deere LA-135. The 42-inch mower deck was uh, quite trashed, actually. Got one video out on that, putting all the major components back on. Um, we're going to pick back up where we left off. That video got kind of long. Um, one thing I hadn't done uh, in the previous video was put some gussets on this support. And today we're going to get those welded up real quick and then we're going to move on to let's refinish this deck. Structurally it will be complete and go. I, I toyed with not putting additional support on that. Um, really after thinking about it and, and actually a couple comments uh, on the previous video. Yeah, we're, we're all correct in that let's put some additional supports. We did to this guy. Um, we welded this big gusset on the front, and we put a angle piece on the back. I forgot to weld one side of this, so I'm going to catch that while I'm at it. Um, so let's get these gussets in. We're going to put this one in here. It's uh, just a piece I kind of custom cut. Um, I laid it between a couple of existing holes on this deck um, in line with this, really to spread out that load. That should be a really good piece. And we'll put another one on this other side. Um, you can see that. Let me bring you around. Again, just to spread the load out now on the other side of the deck. And we're getting close to a bend. You know, when metal is bent, it has a lot more strength. So it a, might be a little stronger out on this side. So let me uh, start welding those things in. We'll get that done and we're going to move on to just, you know, the dirty part of this thing. We'll try and get all the paint off. It's been repainted one time um, from what I can see. Um, we'll get all this paint off of there and we'll treat the rust areas. We'll get it in primer today and hopefully paint it tomorrow. Um, I've toyed with, I don't like the look, but I toyed with doing this in truck bed liner. Um, but uh, I'll probably just paint it, but we'll see, we'll see what we get. All right, let me uh, get the welder fired up and let's get to getting. All right, let's get this one I missed. Get this intact. We'll get this intact. Well, 
finish that up. All right, all the welding is done, and we're going after this thing with the angle grinder with a twisted wire cup wheel. We're going to try and get most of the work done with this. We might go over it with like a DA sander with the spots that are nice and flat that we maybe want to look good. And, uh, and then we'll go by and treat the rust. And uh, then we'll get it in primer. So we'll do this for a little bit and then I'll work my tail off off camera. <laughs> It's going to take time, but that's the process. Here we go. All right, I've been working on this for a while. I'm not done, obviously, but significant progress, I guess. It's, you can't get to all these tight spaces and such with that big old wire wheel. Um, here's just a little trick I was fiddling with, getting around inside this gutter. Trying to burn that paint up in there. And then scrape it off. Worked pretty good. Got about 95% of it that way. Right. 
Anyway, I made life a little easier. We'll get on around the corner too. Well, you can see, I got a little work to do. Here we go. So there's a lake about oh, three blocks from my shop and the ducks all hang out in the lake. But these two have been coming to my shop for many, many years. And just kind of hanging out when we just have nothing but rain. So there's puddle after puddle. And uh, they like to hang out in the puddles. <laughs> So we, uh, excuse me, we accommodate them best we can. Try not to bother them too much, but the grinding and so forth doesn't seem to bother them at all. I don't know what they find to eat uh, in these fresh puddles, but whatever it is brings them back year after year. Quack, quack, quack. All right, the uh, sanding continues, but we're almost done. That uh, heat process for going around in the gutters uh, was working really good. I just got a little bit to go. Um, but on this corner, for whatever reason, they're, they're running into this black primer. And I wish I knew what it was because it is outstanding. It is, you just can't get it off. So um, that's why there's this. There's a couple spots elsewhere where I run into that black primer and you just... You just can't get it off. So if it's that well adhered, we just leave it be. Um, so anyway, I just got this corner to go. So I'm going to finish it up. Then I'm actually... Uh, I've been looking online a little bit for different yellow paint. So first off, the quality of the paint that you get, like at the farm store and so forth, not great. For example, these two uh, oil pumps and that gas pump, I painted with that Van Sickle tractor paint. A uh, number of years ago, I mean, they've been sitting outside for, let's call it 10 years. Um, but they haven't been looking good for a long time. Um, gas pump's not horrible, but the oil pumps are. And uh, I think if they were painted with Rust-Oleum, they would look well better than that today. So this is that Van Sickle brand. Now as a color match, it is actually really good. And I will probably will use this green paint to either repaint or touch up the deck on this machine. The deck, the rest of the body. Because, you know, there's some rust there that needs to get fixed. Um, in Rust-Oleum for yellow, though, that's where I was headed. Um, this is Sunburst Yellow. It's a little bit too orange. It's not quite a match, but they have a color called Safety Yellow. Um, it is not available in spray cans, at least that I have found. It's not even available in quartz. It's available in a gallon. But uh, I'm going to say I do enough decks to probably afford the gallon of Safety Yellow. Um, and if you've seen the price of spray cans here recently, um, it, I think the gallon was 48 bucks that's uh four cans of spray paint which might do two decks it might come short of doing two decks and then if you want to do any wheels or something that's on you so you know you need spray gun for that but have that so i think that's what i'm going to do is take a piece of this paint all these chips on the floor find a big piece maybe that decal and take it down to the store and compare it i think it's going to be close enough we're going to run with that um for economic reasons and for the fact i think it will last better so let's finish this deck get all that paint ground off of it start cleaning it up get ready to convert the rust and uh, get some primer on it today so we can paint it soon here we go all right boys and girls we got this thing uh cleaned the shop up because it was so dusty in there 
Wish it was nicer weather out. Could have done the whole thing outside, but we got the door open now anyway. And um, wipe this thing down with mineral spirits a couple of times, right? We're trying to get the dirt, grease, and stuff off of it. That's done. Um, what you can do now um, to be sure all the grease is off and to kind of get rid of mineral spirits residue and so forth is go over at least the rough parts of this with a torch. Just kind of warm it up. Get that stuff evaporating out of there. It was really hard to reach places that you didn't really get to sand too good. You can burn the impurities out of it. Okay, we're just doing a quick little, you can watch the vapors leave there. This way it's as, well, I wouldn't say it's as good as it can be. We're not painting a Camaro here, we're doing a deck for a lawnmower, right? All right. Hey, we got a little fire. We'll do that gutter. So I'm gonna go around this whole thing and kind of get it ready and then we're gonna do the old rust converter and i'll show you what i use all right guys here's that safety yellow i went in and bought a gallon is a uh, 50 bucks for some reason they charge you some fee now for paint i don't know if it's just an oregon thing or what but anyway um it looks a little different on the screen but it looks almost dead on i guess it's about the same it looks dead on in real life so it's probably as close a match I know the yellows vary a little bit too and when you get a little age on it and all that stuff but uh, I like the fact that it's rust-oleum I think it's a better paint um, and I like the fact that it's available in a bulk container much less expensive than multiple multiple spray cans so this ain't gonna be my first uh or last uh, yellow john deere yellow paint i may even paint the johnson loader on my 140 h1 um yellow because it'd look good on the tractor so we'll have plenty of paint so that's that now we need to convert the rust let me show you what i'm using what i have used i've got a number of different videos on rust sergeant i'll let you uh, get some information off it it's made in like grants pass oregon or something like that i'm going to look quick on the back mm. oh it looks like they have, have it made by rod of paint uh central point oregon okay um, go to www.vintagejeeps.com or www.g503.com. So it looks like this is through Rod of Paint. I bought the I bought four gallons of this because it was free shipping if you bought four gallons. Probably a lifetime supply for me. I hope it doesn't go bad on the shelf. But <clears throat> it's really good stuff. Um, there are lots of other rust converters out there, and they're all just fine. Um, so I'm not saying this is the best one on the market. I'm saying I got four gallons of it. It's what we're using. That's what I'm saying. It has the consistency of a of a melting milkshake. It has the smell of Elmer's glue, and it doesn't take much. That little couple ounces or whatever in this little cup is way more than I need to do this deck so we'll do a little bit and it's what it's going to do is turn the rust black there's no good reason to put this on shiny metal that's not rusty okay it doesn't actually work that well on metal that's not rusty okay so we're just using a cheap harbor freight brush we're going to brush it onto everything that was rusty um, and we'll not go out of our way to put it on painted or shiny metal okay just not gonna do it it doesn't dry as quickly etc this will be ready to prime I just shut the door because it was raining and hailing and 
such. And I turn on a couple of the infrared heaters above. So this should dry in an hour or so. We should be able to put this in primer today. It's about, I don't know, 233 o'clock, something like that. So if we can get it in primer before I leave for the day, that'd be great. Then it'll be ready to do something more with tomorrow. All right. All right. Let me finish this up. So I just got done brushing it on. Um, I was uh, pretty good on the old amount of stuff. There's a little bit left of what I showed you. So it's trash now. We'll just let it evaporate. So you can see it's turning the rust into black. It's probably going to take about an hour or so. And then it'll be ready to prime. So I'm going to hunt around as long as we're going to dirty up a spray gun this week anyway. I've probably got some primer a quarter gallon or something in the Rust-Oleum brand and we'll get ready to spray this in primer. If you use the you you'll know, get it by the quart or the gallon, it's a lot less expensive. You can thin it out enough to spray it but kind of leave it real thick where you know you can use it kind of a high build primer. And then, you know, if we get this thing in primer today, which is the goal, um, we should be able to sand it down tomorrow. Again, we're not painting a Chevelle fender here. We are painting a deck for a lawnmower. I get that. But uh, still, we can lightly sand it or even wet sand it in a day or so and knock the high spots off of it just quickly. All right? Just quickly. We'll make it, you know, 50% better, 50% smoother. And I'm hoping that the weather holds for us so we can shoot this outside. I hate shooting in the shop because it just gets everywhere like the dust from grinding all this stuff off. But uh, kind of a labor of love. Now, if, if I was for sure keeping this machine, I don't have use. I don't mow. I don't have that much property. I mow with a snapper rear engine rider that's my preference it's uh it's quicker than mowing with something like this it gets around a little easier um stores in less space and so forth so this is way bigger than i need i've thought about keeping one of these for you know helping somebody mow sometime but you know i realistically i've never done that and when i have done that they already have a mower so anyway um, I doesn't mean I don't want to own a, a John Deere that mows because I got a couple others that do other things, but realistically, this is going to be a sold. So if I was keeping it, I'd do the other side. If you're keeping it, do the other side. But I'm not going to get back what I've put into this one, probably. I mean, if you want something for your labor and a few more hours of prepping and doing the other side. I'm certainly not going to get that back when I sell this either. So this is what it's going to get. And it's going to look great. And it's going to be great. And uh, maybe, you know, with a little bit of care, it will uh, last as long as the rest of the mower does. And quite honestly, I've never mowed with this. I've never done anything more than drive it off the trailer and drive it into this shop. So I don't even know the condition of the rest of this machine. Seems to run okay. It's probably fine. But... Uh, you know, I don't know. So I'm, I'm putting a lot of effort into a deck um, for a machine with a question mark is kind of what I'm saying. So anyway, um, let's let this dry and we'll figure out how to get some primer on it before the day is over. The deck kit is ordered. It'll be here this week. Um, so about time we get it painted, this stuff should all arrive and uh, we'll get her done. But you can see she's still turning black as we speak. And I didn't paint the rust converter on shiny metal or other paint that's not what it's for it goes on rusty metal primer will catch the rest of it okay see you back here in a little bit all right this deck is ready let's mix up some primer so this is rust-oleum rusty metal primer it's a red oxide color it's been on my shelf for so long i spent 20 minutes stirring this up it's crazy uh let's mix it up we're gonna thin it out spray it 
I'm looking for a strainer. Let me see if I can find one. All right, here's a strainer. I'm gonna make a mess, guaranteed mess. That's all right. That's all right. Pour quickly. All right. Pour quickly and then wipe off the can. All right, we're gonna let that strain and drain. It's really thick. This is uh, mineral spirits in here. We're gonna help it go down. And you can thin uh, Rust-Oleum with either mineral spirits or uh, acetone. And you might get a little better finish with acetone. My experience is. All right, that's gonna take a minute. All right, we got the paint in there. Um, so you're gonna need to reduce this so it will go out of the spray gun. Um, around 15%, give or take. Um, you kinda gotta get a feel for it. Um, so I've got a little in there. I'm going to try to shoot it as thick as it can. If I was looking for a really good finish, that we would shoot it a little thinner because it'll lay down a little better. Um, it's cold out today. Cold. About, it's maybe like 50 degrees out, so it's not going to dry real fast. That helps because it will sit in a liquid state or, you know, on the metal and it will flatten out more. Okay. If it's going to dry quick, it's not going to lay out as nice if it dries fast. Okay. Takes quite a little bit to get this stirred up, to get it all mixed up. Um, automotive paint with automotive reducer, that stirs up pretty quickly. So you really got to work on this a bit. It feels pretty good. Actually, I might have liked it just a little thicker, but this will be fine. We'll just have to shoot it a couple times. I'm going to shoot it inside because it's been raining and even hailing and whatever today. and So I'm going to shoot at a real low pressure. Um, I, I mean, I run 110 pounds shop air, but I got a regulator on my detail gun. And I'm going to keep it in like the 30 pound range so that I don't have much overspray, okay? Some people uh, will count when that stream turns into drops and they want it like three or four seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, about six seconds. So it might be a little thicker than you would paint your uh, Nova or something. All right, here we go. had this gun for a long time and I call it a detail gun I don't know what else they call it but had it a long time all right here we go get all the hard to reach places first gives you a chance to adjust your gun a little bit so I'm adjusting for uh, how much is coming out it basically stops my trigger okay and then this will adjust the fan how wide okay. you go wider you can take a little more paint Open that up a little.
Again, I'm running very low working pressure. Keeps the overspray down. It's going to take a little longer. All right, let me paint for a little bit. All right, I did top off the gun. I wasn't out by any means, but we're going to open up the throttle on this thing a little bit and spray the flat areas. We're going to throw some paint on it. Open her up. Okay, we're going to let that tack. We're going to throw some more on it. So we have, basically we're kind of using it to fill in some of the defects, the bumps, the rust, you know. So we'll go from there. Sit. Got the door open, but I got all my heaters on, so we're getting a little artificial sun. All right. Oh, what do we got? Yeah. That's what we're watching. Besides watching paint dry. Second coat. Here we go. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, there's enough paint left in here for a third coat. So this is going to need to sit for yeah, 20, 30 minutes. Coat number three. Here we go. Trying to ease up the paint now. There we go. All right, clean out the gun. We'll see you guys tomorrow. For some yellow, how would that be? We're gonna do some yellow tomorrow. <clears throat> um, you'll see a lot of little dots in there, and I believe most of that is gonna be the off gassing of the rust remover because I really should have waited quite a bit longer for that to dry and cure before I started throwing this on there, but I didn't because you know, always in a hurry so. Is what it is. It's a mower deck, not a falcon. All right, catch you tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the next day. It's Wednesday. And uh, so I threw a lot of primer on this thing yesterday. There's some good and bads when you do that. The bad is I got it so thick in some areas that it didn't even dry. See there? Um, that is what it is. Sometimes you have to keep pushing schedule and uh that's going to be the case we're going to keep proceeding because we got to get this done and we got to get on to the next project so what we're doing now is oh <laughs> is the areas that show okay those outside stuff we're going to knock the tops down with some scotch bright pads i'm pretty cheap so i take my new scotch bright pads and i cut them into little squares um, because I use them all the time. So I grab a little square, I use it, and then I toss it instead of a whole pad. So the scotch right pads ask, actually ask, uh, last me a very long time. Um, and that's how we're going to get this all sanded down. So I'm hoping this reveals. This is kind of rough right here where it was a difference between rusted areas and smooth areas. So this being a rusted area, smooth area. So we put the rust converter on. You know, this has a little texture to it. So the idea is to knock the tops off. may not be perfect, but it's going to be pretty good. And then the paint will hide a little bit more. So it sands pretty good. 
I'm going to have to be careful, and if I run into something that uh, isn't quite dry, we're just going to have to stop and uh, let it be what it is. But it's actually coming out pretty good. And this is the advantage to putting a lot of primer on it, is there's a lot to sand down. So we're taking the tops off, and the whole bunch of primer that's in all the low areas are what's helping this thing to be smooth. I'm going to flip that over. So this is particularly a rough spot right here. We're going to sand on it just for a minute longer. And then we're going to realize that it's not going to be perfect and we're going to move past it. So. Let me scoot you in here. <clears throat> again this is way nicer than it needs to be i mean you guys could brush this stuff on right you could brush the primer on yesterday you could be brushing the paint on today and it will look fine it'll look great sitting underneath your tractor right bring you in on a on a real real close up over here maybe you can see a little more detail and it smooths out real nice I could have run some heat in here last night and all this would have been probably dry, but I'm pretty cheap. Especially when you're paying electric bills at two addresses. Alright, and plus I keep all the RVs plugged in and stuff, so anyway. So, there you go. So, I'm going to finish uh, sanding this down, knocking the high spots off, making it uh, smooth, smooth. Then we'll wipe it down, and then uh, we'll mix up some yellow paint. We'll get this thing painted. The sun is out a little bit today. It's still a little overcast. I haven't checked the forecast for the day, but I sure would rather paint this outside. It sure makes a mess in my shop, so I'll check the forecast and see what it says all right let me uh finish this all right let's mix up some paint i did the whole uh use my paint stick dip it down into the paint and then run it into a throwaway cup so i didn't mess up this new can so it'll seal good um if you didn't watch the first video, this is Safety Yellow. It's, I could only find it from Rust-Oleum in a gallon container. I can't find it in a spray can. I can't get it in a quart. But I found it in a gallon. So I invested $50 in this gallon, which is still way cheaper than like three or four cans of spray paint. We're going to reduce this in the 10 to 15% with mineral spirits. You can use acetone. In fact, sometimes it's a better finish using acetone, but this is what I got. It's about gone, too, so... I kind of got an eyeball on this cup. About where 10-15% is. Gonna kind of get a feel for it over time. 
it sprayed pretty good yesterday the primer did so it's cold today it's still in the 40s not ideal for painting by any means but I can't change the weather I'm not gonna paint it inside if I can avoid it so uh, Rust-Oleum we really gotta mix this a while it's, it takes a minute so take your time stir it up good stir it up thoroughly it's a little thick I got a little bit of mineral spirits in my gun should have used it at first that feels pretty good So I looked at the weather, it's not, I could get bit on this, it could shower, but I'm taking a gamble, and we moved it outside, and we should be good, alright, we should be good, let's put some paint in the gun. Let's go paint. Talk about a well ventilated area. It's kind of breezy out this morning. Not the greatest. Play the cards were dealt. Gonna hit all the difficult places. Finish up his first coat. Ready for second coat.
Mount Sunshine. All right, we're gonna uh, let that tack up and we'll come back and hit her again. Coat number three. I got a few runs in it, I gotta tell you. Happens, it's really cold out. And windy.
All right, we're gonna call it. I'll bring you in here and show you what we got. If the old sun will uh, stay out, she's going to cure out pretty good. But is it perfect? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Has it got lots of good paint and stuff on it for to protect this thing and make it look decent down the road? Yep, sure does. That's the goal, right? But uh, remember what this thing started out like? If you saw the first video on this thing, we took this deck out. It was hanging by ropes and chains, and these were all pulled out, and deck wheel uh, mount was missing and such and now she looks pretty good is it new no nope. might be better than new especially if we'd have done the underside right highly recommend do the underside guys i'm not going to spend the time with this i got too many other irons in the fire quite honestly but this is looking real good let's let it sit out here and cook in the sun and then uh Next video, we'll put this thing back together. So, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate the comments. And I, I encourage the comments. I sit down every morning now and answer comments. And I don't care if you want to make a comment about the video that you just watched or a comment about what you're working on or what you're doing or something different than I'm doing or useful suggestions or whatever. It's all good. Um, I'm really enjoying my morning sitting down and getting to know uh, my viewers. So that's awesome. So guys, thumbs up please on the way out. And we'll catch you on the next video, okay? Come on, sunshine. Oh, let me show you the paint in case you didn't see the first video. All right, safety yellow. Okay, they make other yellows um, that are not safety yellow, and they're not even close. That's one of them there. That one, that's sunburst yellow, it's too orange. Okay, again, I took this color chip with me um, when I went down to the Home Depot, and this was the decal off the deck, and it is... It is close enough, guys. It really is. It's close enough. And then you're going to thin it with the mineral spirits, okay? Whatever you got. I'm about done with this can, but I got other parcels sitting all over the place. All right, guys. That's it. Another rust paint job in the record books. Catch you next time.